Your congregation is a miracle. Just think about it for a minute. People get up on Sunday morning. There are lots and lots of things that require their attention. And yet week in and week out, they assemble together around the Lord's table. This synod is a miracle. You have lots of opportunities for the use of your time. And yet, because Christ has called you, you're here. You're here to do the work of the church. The longer I work with congregations and see congregations and have a chance to visit congregations and synods, the more I realize this is a miracle. This is the miracle of baptism. This is the miracle of being together. And so as we move forward, we move forward together. Now that's, that's tricky business. Because every ministry needs to be nimble and responsive. And as the years go by, we need to be more nimble and more responsive and more attentive to opportunities that present themselves to us. And being together doesn't mean we walk in lockstep. But what it means is that we have, we have a stake in each other's well-being. And we really are sisters and brothers in Christ. For me, I was taught this as a young pastor by a wise, wonderful, then retired, now singing God's praises in heaven, UCC minister down the street from the church where I was a pastor. He made a point of coming over to see me. And I remember, I'll always remember what he said to me. What we owe each other, he said, is not competition. What we owe each other is to celebrate the good things and be there for each other when things aren't going so well. And so for the whole time I was a pastor there and he was a minister down the street, we would send each other notes, and he'd ask me to include a word of thanksgiving in our prayers for what was going on at Brooklyn Heights United Church of Christ. Or for us to remember them in a time of their need. That's kind of what it means to be in this together. Let's look at that Acts passage again. Got the Acts passage handy? She can. If, you, if it doesn't go up, I'll tell you what it said. It says, and they devoted themselves to apostolic teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and prayers. And when we think about being together, we remember that from the very beginning, they were devoted to fellowship. I looked it up. I looked it up in my Greek, in my Greek dictionary. That word that's translated devoted also can mean they persisted in their fellowship. They weren't going to let it go. They were stuck with each other. You know how others can sometimes just plain wear you out? And in, this, in an age where we especially cherish our individuality, we're in this together. As a synod, as a church, as the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
they devoted themselves to this fragile thing we call fellowship, koinonia, being together in this journey forward. You got the word journey in there. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Well, there's a video that I saw of a congregation that's doing some work that I thought would be instructive for you to look at right now. It's a congregation that has what they call a blue jean Sunday. And are we ready for that? Blue jean Sunday got its name because we come in blue jeans or work clothes on that Sunday. And we bring sandwiches to eat after service is over. And then we go out in the community and we help people on um, yard work, housework, um, we get our needs from senior citizen centers, um, people that know people that need help. Sometimes it's painting a room because um, they just can't get around to doing it. Um, building, we built uh, handicap ramps. Um, it takes two to three hours, usually on that Sunday afternoon, and most of the congregation pitches in. Sunday in the past, you need to. And if it's if you have some type of physical handicap, um, we work things out for what you can do. Um, so if it's just watching the, the little ones here for some mothers and fathers moving out to do it, or if it's just uh, you can be in watching the connects if that's something you need. It doesn't have to be physically challenging for you to be able to participate in the gym Sunday. And what you get out of it is with so much more than what you have to put into it. My guess is that uh, not everybody wears blue jeans. <laughs> My guess is that maybe not everybody in that congregation participates, but maybe most do. Doesn't make any difference. They're in it together. And together, those that wear their jeans and go out and serve in that way, in that community, are doing it on behalf of the whole. And they're doing it together. When I was in Ohio two weeks ago, leading the uh, Senate Assembly, it was great to be back and to see people I hadn't seen in eight years to be reconnected with some of the congregational leaders. But I also had to recognize that in that synod, like in North Carolina, the fellowship has been impaired in the last few years. Some people that were there have felt like they needed to move into a different denomination. And I say this to you as someone who 30 years ago had to leave the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and I've never looked back. In fact, I tell people, uh, becoming a part of the ELCA for me was the second smartest thing I ever did in my life next to marrying Kathy. But it's not a victory. It's not a victory when our fellowship is impaired. And so our church's vision, at least this modest vision that we had that brought about Lutheran Book of Worship back in the 70s, that all the Lutherans in the United States would have the same hymn book, or the vision that formed the ELCA that Lutherans in the United States could give an expression to our togetherness, is not just noble, it's faithful. It's faithful to what our Lord wants. 
And so this being together and moving forward, our togetherness is a fragile, precious, precious, miraculous gift that requires our devotion and our attention. So when someone else has some reason to rejoice, we all rejoice. When someone has a reason to be sad, we're all saddened. I think we've come to a point in the life of the church in the United States where we really need, need to reimagine what it, need, what it means for us to be members of a congregation. Now I say this as someone who believes that we need to keep accurate records and we need to be responsible for those for whom we are attentive in our congregations, but about 12 years ago there was an incident that occurred that reminded me of this or that taught me this lesson. A police officer in the west side of Cleveland was shot and killed during a drug raid. The perpetrator was quickly arrested, but the community, which was very poor, very poor, was very anxious, and there was vir virtually a shutdown of, of, of that community. The pastor of Martin Luther Church on Madison Avenue asked me if I'd come and just visit with him. He was right in the middle of that neighborhood, a very small congregation, by all of our measurable standards, about 20 or 30 people in worship on Sunday. It's now closed. But as I walked with Larry up and down the streets of that neighborhood, everybody that saw him called him pastor. And I realized in many ways he was their pastor. And membership in that context was a lot bigger and our togetherness was a lot broader than sometimes we even imagine. So as we move forward, we do it together with ourselves and with a lot of other partners. Let me just talk about some of the dimensions of our togetherness, of our fellowship, our congregations, like we saw on Blue Jean Sunday, that we do things in the name of Christ together. Maybe not always agreeing, but together. We have a fellowship with those who have come before us. For some of you, in your congregations, that's been a long legacy. These are saints who have entrusted to us the ministry of this place. We do it together with colleagues, clergy, who have colleagues who can listen and talk and offer advice, especially for those who are more experienced giving advice to those who are younger. And yet, as I look at our young pastors and had the privilege of being at the seminary, our young pastors have a lot to teach those of us who've been around for a while too. But not just clergy. When congregational presidents have a chance to be together and encourage each other, when, as Bishop Bolick has had a vision, congregations that are similarly sized can come together and can help resource each other and give each other thoughts and ideas and hopes and dreams for what their future might be, that's part of our togetherness and our fellowship. Our ecumenical partners. I've had a number of conversations with a number of you, and the ecumenical partnerships are just flourishing in a lot of places. The companions that the Synod offers us is a dimension of this fellowship and our togetherness. Our international partners can surely teach us a great deal. Our companion Synod program in the ELCA has been a great blessing to us as we've seen how the church operates and works and is faithful to Christ in many places across the world. And so, my brothers and sisters, this gift we have, this miracle we have, our congregations, our synods, the One Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church is a gift to us from Christ. And we move forward together. Tomorrow we'll talk about 
how we do that in Christ and in community. Thank you.